Good morning, tubers. Matt M. Roy back once again. Back to you on the 3rd of September, 2018. Labor Day. Happy Labor Day, everybody. About 11 a.m. I thought since this is Labor Day, I probably wouldn't have a lot of work going on today. Though we go ahead and do a vlog. Labor Day is that day where we're all supposed to relax, have fun, maybe cook out. In our case, we're not going to be doing that today. Mom is cooking a barbecue pork roast downstairs. It's actually a Boston butt, I believe. So we're going to do pork barbecue, we're going to do coleslaw, and we're going to do beans for dinner. Um, don't know what else we're going to get to do today. If you hear a little noise in the background, this is this fan I have. Really hot today, almost 88 degrees. Um, September really has come in with a bang as, uh, as opposed to whimper. At least when it comes to the heat, because it has really been hot the past few days. Um, as you guys may have seen, I've been posting up on Facebook and also on Instagram. I've been working out at Planet Fitness for the past few days. I have basically uh, been going on the treadmill and then doing a um, weights workout with their weight machines. Uh, basically all upper body because my uh, legs, all my lower body is fine, but my upper body muscles are a little bit on the weak side. So I want to go primarily um, focus on that. Last two days at uh, Planet Fitness, I did uh, 60 minutes on the treadmill. I did two 15-minute miles, so that's at four miles an hour. And then I went down and did another mile at 3.6 miles an hour, and then I brought it down to like 3.3, 3.4 miles an hour. And then after 60 minutes, you have to do a five-minute cool down. So if you're interested in seeing how I'm doing there, uh, check me out on Instagram and also follow me on Facebook, either one. So... Hopefully I can keep that up. My back is a little sore today. I've had been having some lower back issues the past uh, week or so. So I've been taking some Tylenol arthritis. It's not arthritis per se, but um, that seems to help the best. It, it basically is just inflammation of the muscles. And what Tylenol does is it helps um, remove that inflammation. So hopefully I'll feel better the next few days. Going to take a break from the gym. Not going to do it today. Hopefully going to get back in the swing of things tomorrow. Um, probably try to get at least 10,000 steps in today. Maybe marching in place. If it gets cooler later on, Mom and I may try to walk outside today. Um, but it's not looking good because the weather is going to be very, very hot. And if you guys are following the tropics, you guys know the tropics are really heating up. So we have to watch that. Hopefully we won't have to bug out this year. Uh, we haven't the past few years at least. Uh, there was one year back when we had Tropical Storm Irene that I wanted to bug out, but we decided to um, stay, stay our grounds here. And it's a good thing we did because it wasn't as bad as they predicted. Mom's over here reading her Bible like she should be. I need to get back to doing that, too. I, I, tried, I get the verse of the day on my phone, and I read that, but I need to get back into the Word because I'm really bad there. And my main problem is I have the focusing issues to where when I start reading... My mind wanders on other things I need to get done. So go ahead and pause this vlog. We'll see what the rest day brings. And I will talk to you guys on the flip side. All right, tubers. So I came downstairs. And just like usual, I have this thing bugging me for treats. Mr. Baxter. You've had your treats. He's already had two sets of treats, uh, at least. Dad comes down early in the morning and gives him treats, and when I wake up, I give him treats, and I think sometimes Mom does, too. It's only 11, 10 after 11, so Baxter, you're going to have to wait a little bit. Sorry, buddy. But I thought I'd show you guys what we're cooking here. This is the Boston butt or the shoulder. I'm not really sure which, but Mom does it in the crock pot. She puts a little bit of George's um, barbecue sauce on there. And basically, you let that go for about five to six hours on high. Brown sugar and mustard. Too. Brown sugar and mustard, too. And uh, basically, once it's done, it, you cut it up. You basically shred it or you slice it really fine, depending on how you like it. And that's what we call real Carolina-style barbecue. How long do you cook it in there for, usually? Gosh, it's hard to say. I'd say... Five, six hours? Yeah, that's what I told them, basically. I should have played it earlier. But... Would you just take a bite of the Jello? I'm waiting for the Jello to get, get hardened. It's not hardened. Oh, okay. Let I... me see. Let me see. It's what does it look like? It's supposed to uh, get 
supposed to get a little congeal so that you could add the it stuff does. to it. You might have to throw it in the freezer no, for a few minutes. Enough. That might be enough. You think? I'm trying to think. Mom's making this Jello dessert. Oh, let me show them the Georges. Pull the Georges out real quick. Oh. I'm curious to see what it. I want to show them what it looks like right there. I see oh, it is. right by Dad's um, yeah, ginger ale. I only have two left. One this left. is the good stuff. I think I've showed this to you guys before, but it definitely oh, no. bears showing again. George's original barbecue sauce from Nashville, North Carolina. I guess there's a Nashville, North Carolina too. Ah. But this stuff's really good. It's a vinegar based. I mean, it's actually it's the best. I've tried. Yeah, one of Mom's favorite and ours too. There, there's everything that's in it. The one ingredient I don't like that it has is the high fructose corn syrup. But we only have this maybe once a month or so. So, you know, got to treat yourselves once in a while. But this is nothing like what they would consider Texas barbecue where they actually have like barbecue sauce. You can see how thin this really is. But one of my favorites and, um, you know, if you guys try it, I think it'll probably be one of yours too. Well, I got to answer a message. I'm going to pause the vlog. And I'll catch you guys on. on the flip side. I was going to tell you, I, I uh, threw a marshmallow down, thought Milo would play with it. I didn't think he'd eat it. But he wound up eating the marshmallow. And then I had the, a cup here to, for my uh, recipe sitting up here. And I went out for a few minutes, came back, and Milo was up on the counter eating the marshmallows out of the cup. Isn't he a stinker? And I remember other cats used to eat it too. Oliver and Simon used to eat marshmallows. No, it's not good. It's too much sugar. He can have one more. It's too much. I haven't eaten out of this. Milo. Milo. Come and get it. I don't know how many ate out of it. That's not good. We'll eat it. <laughs> he has a hard time. It takes him a minute because they're real chewy. Do you remember who else used to like marshmallows? No. Rusty. Oh my Our gosh, dog. yes! I used to love marshmallows that we had when we were in New York. I want to see if he eats the whole thing. Go chomp down on that, Milo. All right, tubers, you saw it live here. Milo eating a marshmallow. Talk to you guys right, tubers, in a little just bit. Hit one o'clock and check this out. We have a very lazy cat, Milo, here. He's been a little bit of a terror this morning. He jumped up on the front hall table near the door, started knocking, trying to paw Mom's flowers. He takes his paw and goes, ch -ch -ch -ch, and almost knocks him down. So he's been kind of a bad boy this morning. Nothing unusual for Milo, though. Look at all that orange on his belly. Uh, look at that orange. I tell you, they both get more orange coloring as they get older. Milo seems to be doing much better with his allergies. I haven't been able, haven't had to take a lot of that eye goop out lately, which is good because I know that's not good for him. If he's getting a lot of that, then he must be really hurting because sometimes in the middle of the summer when I get like that, I know my eyes are red, watery, scratchy, all of the above. What? Doesn't seem to want me to bother him, do you, bud? Interesting how they clean. They lick. He licks his leg, and then he uses the moistened fur to clean behind his ears. It always amazes me to watch cats clean. They're such in adventurous and inventive creatures. Good boy, Milo. Yes, you are. All right, tubers, I'm going to go ahead and let him finish his bath here. Got a few more things I want to show you today. So Milo and I will catch you guys on the flip side. Well, tubers, for being Labor Day, a day that we're supposed to rest, I've actually been very productive today. So, continuing with the vlog, I think it's time for another room tour. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because there are a few... New things that I've added to my room that I think you guys may want to see. So let's go ahead and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. The very first thing that I've added recently, actually this past Saturday, I went to one garage sale and I was able to pick up this beautiful TV stand. 
Now I'm actually going to sit down when I show you guys the bottom parts because I can't get close enough with my back. Um, this TV stand is not solid wood. It is definitely press board, but it is a very good quality press board. You can see under there, um, if I can let this thing focus, you can definitely see the press board under there. But on top, they've actually done a very, very good job of making it look like real wood. I picked this up for $10. That's right, tubers, $10 for this beautiful little um, TV stand. Now, this, I'm going to tell you right now, this took forever to re-hook up everything because it was such a mess back there. Mom and I worked on this for, I would have to say, a good two, two and a half hours on Saturday. I want to give Mom a shout out because she did such a good job. She, she helped me fish all the wires through this thing. And believe me, if you guys look down here, there are a lot of wires. That's only one right there. There's actually another uh, hole down there, which you can't probably see. But I did a decent job making sure the wires looked as good as I possibly could. I still have my selector box back here, which I've actually trim lined now because I actually am running the um, VCR through the DVD player instead of through this box. So now I actually have three more inputs available in here for something like hooking up my vintage um, gaming systems like my NES or my Sega Genesis, which will probably happen in a future video. Got the good old rabbit ears antenna for picking up over the air digital broadcast because we do not have analog TV anymore. So without further ado, let's go down here and I'll show you exactly what I have. Bottom row here, I have my little subwoofer, and I've showed this before in other videos. This is just a Dell um, speaker system that is really made for a computer, but it works just fine for the TV as well. Here I'm storing some, um, these are just some DVD cases that have like some burnt DVDs I've, I've done over the years. On top of that is my good old JVC VCR. This is a JVC model HF-D750UM. It barely fits here. As a matter of fact, I could probably move it over just a tad, but you can see that it's a tight fit there. There's hardly, I bet there's not even a quarter of an inch on either side, but you know what? What's important is it fits. I absolutely love this VCR. This is a model from 1998. It is hi-fi forehead. Eventually, I would really like to get a six-head VCR, but this one works perfectly fine for my needs. On top of there, I have my good old PlayStation 3. This is a 80-gigabyte um, model, I believe. I only really ever use this for streaming Netflix and Hulu and stuff. I'm really not much of a video gamer, as you guys know. Um, as a matter of fact, my <laughs> my wireless PlayStation remotes, the batteries went bad from lack of using them. So now the only thing I have to control this is the actual um, DVD remote. So have to order a few of those in the near future. On top of that, I have my LaserDisc player. This is a Pioneer CLD-V2600 or V2600. Yep, that's it. Very, very good laser disc player. It's a basic model, but it is a commercial one. So this is basically indestructible. I remember in high school, we used a very similar model. It may have been this exact same model to run the driving simulator for the uh, driver's ed classes. Um, I do still have my DVL 909, the DVD player and the laser disc combo, but that one um, is a little finicky. I need to go ahead and have the um, door mechanism worked on. It's a little bit beyond my expertise, so I will probably have to go ahead and send that to a local shop to get repaired. But for now, this works just fine. On top of that, I have my Toshiba DVD recorder. This is DVD recorder model D-R400. And like I said before, what I'm actually doing now is I have the uh, VCR running through the DVD player. And the reason I did that is because that allows me to not only record um, Files TV to the VCR, but I can also record it to the DVD player, and I can actually do it at the same time. And that brings me to the last piece of equipment, which is the Verizon Fios box, which is sitting right beside here. Um, 
a little bit, a little bit is hidden in there by the uh, support beam for the TV stand, but that's fine. The infrared receiver is right here. The power button, all the buttons are still exposed. And yes, I do have my picture of the cats up there. That's just there to hide some uh, wires that I really couldn't route that well. Now on top where the TV is, I have my two uh, left and right channel speakers here. And then I was actually able to put the um, center speaker right up here before on the old one. I actually had it sitting down on the one and only shelf down there. Wasn't really the best way to um, have it set up. But this way, everything is neat and tidy and looks great. Up on top here is my 43-inch uh, Insignia TV. You guys can go ahead and I'm going to move myself out of the way so you don't have to see me. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that is it. I am so stoked to have this perfect height for the uh, bed now. And that is the next thing I want to show you guys. So I'm going to flip you guys around and show you the second thing in my room that is new. Talk to you in just a minute. All right, tubers. And this is my next purchase, albeit this cost quite a bit more than the TV stand did. I finally got myself a new bed. Uh, Mom and I, about a week ago now, um, a little bit more than a week, actually went out to our local store called the Original Mattress Factory, and I selected a new bed. I actually chose the um, Original Mattress Factory Regency Plush mattress. Nice, sturdy mattress. Uh, it has a lot of foam built up on top. Basically, it's got uh, memory foam. In the center of that is the that egg crate material, and then under there is your regular inner spring mattress. I was originally just going to get a new mattress, but my box spring was also worn out, so I basically decided to get the whole shebang. I got the mattress box spring, and a new frame. If you could see underneath here, everything looks nice and fresh. Ooh, new and shiny. And because it was such a good deal, I also opted to get this wrought iron headboard. I was actually very surprised at how cheap this was. Um, the headboard itself, the bed, um, everything there came to about $900, which I thought was a great deal. And this is real wrought iron. This is fake, but you know what? That doesn't actually bother me. I just really want to have a nice headboard. I've never had a headboard that was right for the bed. Like my other mattress, this is a full or a double, depending on where you live, they call it either a full or a double. The other headboard I had was actually made for a queen, so I could never get it to be attached to the frame itself. Now I finally have a bed with a matching headboard that is indeed attached to the frame so I can move this out to clean it. What is nice is the whole thing is on wheels so if I need to clean behind my bed I can just pull out on the bed. It'll pull out right into the middle of the room. I can get back there. I can vacuum. I can dust and I can get every single thing done I need cleaning wise. On top of that you guys know that I'm working out a lot now and finally I'm not waking up every morning with back aches because that was actually down to my other bed. It didn't have enough support for me. As you can feel, this is very supportive. It is plush, but it also has a lot of support. It's what they call a hybrid mattress. It's a plush, but a firm mattress at the same time. So I am set for a while now. I can hear mom and dad calling me. We're going to head out to the gym. I know I said I wasn't going to go to the gym today, but dad wants to work out. I want to encourage him, so I'm going to head and pause the vlog. And I'll talk to you guys on the flip side. All right, tubers, I'm heading now to go to the gym. That's going to be it for the vlog today. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Please continue to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.